Hello and welcome. My name is Hugo and in this video I'm going to show you how to read a bitmap image file using C++. This video would build heavily on my last video about creating a bitmap image. So if you haven't seen that one, I do suggest that you check that one out first. There will be a card up in the corner and a link in the description. Just like in the last video, I do want to say that the purpose of this video is not to make you a bitmap image expert. It's simply to show you how you can read uh, some bitmaps in the simplest way possible. Some of the concepts like compression and uh, color palettes are not covered in this video, uh, but you should be able to read simple bitmap images. For example, those created in the last video. So let's get started. This is the same project as I used in the last video, and I will continue to expand in this one. We're first going to go into the image.h file and we're going to add another method. This one will be called read. That will take in a const char pointer and I'll name that path just as the export. So now I'm going to create the definition for this one in image.cpp. So this is the code from last time and we will go up here to the read method and it's going to be quite similar but um, I'll show you. So first we're going to create an std if stream and I'll call that f. That's the object that we're going to use to read the file. Then we're going to open the if stream using the path and std ios in and std ios binary. So binary is the same as last time and in just means that we are going to read the file. So that one means that we're going to read it and we're reading in binary. Then we're going to test to see if the opening of the file was successful. So if the file wasn't opened, then we can print out an er error message. So I'm just going to use stdc out and say that the file could not be opened. And if that's the case, we can also just return because the rest of the file cannot be read. Next, we're going to create a const int and I'm going to name this file header size and that's going to be equal to 14. Now you could use these as global variables because these are used in both the read and the export uh, methods uh, but I'm just going to copy the code from last time. So the file header size is 14 and the information header size is 40 just as explained in the last video. And then I'm going to create an unsigned char array and I'll call that file header. And the size of that one is going to be file header size. Now to load the file header, we're going to use f.read and that will take in the location that we want to store if it's ever read and that will be the file header and how many bytes we want to read. And that will be the file header size. Now this is an unsigned char pointer and this method uh, takes in a char pointer so we need to reinterpret that as a char pointer so i'm going to use reinterpret cast and in the parenthesis we're just going to write file header then i'm going to copy all of this and do the exact same thing for the information header so I'm just going to change this to information and I can copy that and paste it in all of the other locations where we have file. Next up we need to find the file size and we can get this one from the file header.
and as explained in the last video that is stored in uh, byte number two uh, so uh, we're gonna use the file header at index two but all integers are divided up uh, into four different bytes so we're gonna add the bit shifted following bytes as well and these will then be combined to create the final int So it will be index 2, 3, 4, and 5. And we bit shift them by 8 extra bits for every. And you can see this is essentially the opposite of what we did last time, where we bit shifted to divide up the integer into different bytes. Now we are joining them together to create the initial integer again. Then we're going to need to do the same thing for the width of the image. And that's stored in the information header at index 4. And just as with the file size, this is also an integer, so it's divided up into four different bytes. So we're going to shift the second uh, byte of the uh, width by 8 bits and then the second by 16 bits and the last one by 24 bits and these will together join to form the total width then we can copy this and do the exact same thing for the height and the height is stored in the following uh, bytes so from 8 to 11 so I'll repla replace these with 8, 9, 10, and finally 11. So all of this should add up so that we have the correct file size, width, and height of the image. Now we can re resize the colors array, or the colors vector, um, using the resize method, and that takes in uh, the width times the height, as that's how many pixels that we're going to have in the entire image. Then just as like in the last vi video, we're going to calculate the padding. And the calculation is exactly the same as last time, so I'll just copy that and paste it. So if you're wondering why uh, this is uh, the calculation for the padding, or what the padding is, uh, you can check out the last video. So now to the actual pixels. We're gonna loop through the entire image. Uh, so first we're gonna loop through the y values. So int y equals 0, y less than height, y++. plus plus. And then we're gonna do the exact same thing for the x values. So int x equals 0, x is less than width x++ plus plus. and this will just loop through all of the pixels next we're gonna create an unsigned char array called color and this will be of size 3 because we have three channels r g and b then we're gonna load the color and i'll use fread we're going to store it in color and it's three bytes. But once again, we have to reinterpret that as a char pointer, as the read method takes in a char pointer and not an unsigned char pointer. So this will load one uh, pixel, the color of that one. Now we actually have to store that color that we just loaded. So we're going to say m colors at y times m width plus x. So this is the same essentially as uh, the set color method, and you could use that one, but this is a bit faster. So we're going to set the r component to um, a float, and we have to static cast it to a float because the red value is an unsigned char as expected. 
So we're gonna start with um, the last element of the color and when that's converted to a float we're gonna divide it by 255. Then we're gonna do the exact same thing for the G and the B components and notice that we're going from 2 down to 0 and not 0, 1, 2 and that's just due to how the colors are organized in bitmaps. So now for after every row we also have to account for the padding and we just want to skip those bytes so we're gonna uh, say f.ignore the padding amount and that's just gonna skip the padding at the end. And when that's done we can just say f.close and print out a message saying that uh, the fact that uh, the file could be read. And that should be pretty much it. One thing that we can add in this method is a check to see that uh, the file that we're trying to read is in fact a bitmap image. And as I explained in the last video, the first two bytes of the file header will always be B and M. So we can test to see that these bytes are in fact B and M uh, before even reading the information header uh, because there's no point in continue to read the image if it's not a bitmap. So if this is not the case, if uh, either of these bytes are not B and M, then we can just say that the specified path is not a bitmap image. And if this is the case, then we can also just uh, return because um, we can't read any more of the, the file if it's not a bitmap. And if we want to be um, picky, we can also say f.close because that's the proper way to do it when we're done uh, reading from a file. So now we're going to go into the um, main method and after this code from last uh, time I'm going to create a new image and I'll call this one copy. I don't remember if we created a default constructor, but we'll see that in a second. Uh, I don't think we did, so I'll just initialize this to 00, zero. but you can obviously add in a default constructor if you don't want to do this, because it looks a bit weird. We can then read the file, and I'll read the file that uh, the first few lines are creating. And after that's been read, then we can just export the new file as copy.bmp. I don't know why I wrote path there. So this will read the image that we first create and then export it as the copy. So then I will just build the project and I'll run it. And it does say that two files have been created and one have been read. So we can go into the product folder and open that copy.bmp image. And as you can see, it has worked. So um, the code is fully functional. I have tried this code using bitmaps created in other programs such as paint.net and so far it seems to work pretty well. But if you run into any problems, then you can always read up more on the subject because there is a risk that uh, the shows in bitmap is structured in a different way to the ones I've shown in these videos. Other than that, I just wanna say thank you so much for watching and if you have any questions, just leave them in, in the comments and I will try to answer them as well as I can. So bye.